Civic engine bay is all cleaned up and she's ready to get a good old turbo kit installed. We have got so many parts ready to go for this thing. Got the big old turbo, intercooler, sidewinder manifold, downpipe, the wastegate dump, all the intercooler piping, DW 1200cc injectors, DW 340 fuel pump, all the silicone couplers and V-bands we need, and there's a lot more stuff in there. So if you guys caught the last video, which if you did not, I will put a link up in the top of the screen. We got this thing completely stripped down, ready to go to get all of these turbo parts installed. Now when I pressure washed the engine bay, I plugged off all the holes that could be possibly getting into the engine and plugged off the throttle body so I didn't get any water in there. I also shoved rags in all of the exhaust ports on the back of the head because we have the headers off and now she is nice and squeaky clean because I absolutely hate working in a dirty engine bay and this thing was filthy. We also had a whole bunch of grease on the bottom of the car from when we blew out the right front axle boot so I also got that all pressure washed up finally. So the Civic is officially ready for our CX Racing turbo kit or in other words our eBay turbo kit because some of this stuff doesn't seem the best quality and it was pretty cheap but we're gonna test out how much of a beating this kit can take so in this CX racing turbo kit the first thing that I want to get installed are the exhaust manifold and the turbo just because then we can kind of get everything mocked up and we can see where we need to run coolant lines where we need to run oil lines then you can mock up the intercooler piping so it's kind of just getting it started and then we'll expand on everything else after that and I want to see what that big old turbo looks like in this absolute sleeper of an engine bay just like the rest of the car if this is the first time you guys are seeing one of the videos on the channel this is a 2010 si it's got 200,000 kilometers on it and she's been the daily for the last like two years and now we just finished building the Beater WRX. So now the Civic's gonna make some sauce. So this CX Racing Kit comes with an exhaust manifold gasket for that Sidewinder manifold. And I believe it's in this little cardboard box right here. Hey, that's exactly what's in here. Nice. Oh, there's a couple more gaskets too. So it looks like we got our downpipe to turbo gasket, which is this four bolt flange gasket. We got our wastegate dump gasket, which is kind of like I don't even know what kind of shape that is. I'm not really that good at uh, geometry. And we got the exhaust manifold gasket, which is sick. We can get this thing installed. And we are gonna use all of the factory bolts for the exhaust. For initially installing this kit, I'm not gonna coat or heat wrap the headers or anything like that. I'm just gonna install them and we'll see what heat issues we have and deal with it later. Because I wanna make sure this whole kit fits before we go coating parts and spending a bunch of money to get stuff powder coated and then having it not fit. Because if you guys follow the Subaru build, you would know why I'm saying that. Because we powder coated a full ETS kit and it ended up being the wrong kit. So I wanna make sure all this stuff fits. So like I said, first thing we're gonna get installed is this sick freaking Sidewinder manifold. It's gonna sit on the engine this way and the turbo is gonna sit right where the old intake was. So this flange is nice and flat. I'm gonna give it a spray with some brake clean, wipe it down, and then I'm gonna take some scotch brite and just scuff up the back of the cylinder head where the previous exhaust manifold gasket was just to clean off any corrosion or anything like that on the aluminum. We'll get this fresh gasket swapped on there. We'll get these headers installed, get them tightened up, and then we can mount the freaking turbo on this thing, which is gonna be so sick. I'm excited. I decided to just get the back of the head cleaned up with scotch brite off camera because it took way too long. So now we're gonna get this exhaust manifold gasket in installed should be super easy you just line it up with the studs back there the only shitty part about working on this car is that you can't see anything on the exhaust manifold because this damn wiper cowl or not wiper cowl the windshield sticks out so far all right we got it on just so you guys know the flat side of the exhaust gasket you'll notice it's kind of lifted on one side and flat on the other side the flat side goes towards the engine that's the only way to line up but now that we got that in let's get to the fun part which is gonna be sliding this Sidewinder manifold in there. I don't know how this is gonna fit with all these lines in the way. Okay. 
Okay, we finally got the Sidewinder manifold to squeeze in there. I just have one nut holding it on right now so it doesn't fall. And we definitely need to make some changes to the factory wiring and the way the factory hoses are routed for the brake booster, the purge valve, and the factory fuel line. So to get this even mounted at all, I'll show you guys what I had to take off real quick. First bracket that I took off is this guy right here. All it is is the bracket that mounts and holds that wire harness on. So you just have to disengage the two clips for this whole plastic piece on the wire harness and then take the 110 mil bolt out. That's garbage now, we're not gonna need this anymore. Then I took off this bracket right here, which is usually for mounting the factory intake. There's just two bolts that hold it on. It sits like this, and then the factory intake usually screws into that threaded part on top there. So we took that out because without this out, this literally was just hitting the flange for the turbo on the manifold. So this is gonna be garbage now. Then another bracket I took off, it wasn't really necessary, but we're not gonna need it, is another bracket for the factory intake, which sits on that little threaded hole right there by the factory fuel line that goes with the fuel rail. Just a 12 mil bolt. This is garbage too. And then I took out the two 10 mils that hold this whole assembly together for the factory purge valve and the factory brake booster line. We're definitely going to be getting rid of this and then we'll have to run our own line all the way to the intake manifold for the purge valve, find a way to mount the purge valve. If we ended up using it, I might delete it and run our own line for the brake booster, which needs to just go to the vacuum booster on the master cylinder back there, which is this line right here. So realistically, this line right here just needs to go to that port. So we could build our own custom line and make it clean. We don't have to have this whole corroded aluminum bracket taking up so much space in the engine bay because we need all that space for a big turbo. The next thing that we're gonna have to do since we removed all that stuff is we're gonna have to modify this wiring harness because you guys can already see that it is definitely in the way of that turbo flange. But outside of that, the factory coolant lines actually clear this manifold perfect, which is cool. We might not even have to modify those coolant lines. We might just have to put some heat tape on them because they are pretty close or when we seracote the manifold those cool lines should be fine so the next thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get all of these clips taken off this plastic piece that is kind of the joining piece for all the wiring harnesses so that we can see what's all in here then once we can see what is all in there we can kind of rip apart the harness if we need to and route the wires in a different way but for now i just want to get them out of the way so that i can get this manifold fully mounted up and then we can get the turbo set in place so we know where we can kind of route stuff. We also won't know how we can route that wire harness until we get the intercooler piping and all that jazz put in there too. So let's pop all these little clips out. I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver, push down, pop them out, take that piece apart and see what it looks like. Okay, first thing I wanna say, and I am not joking when I say this, these engine bays suck to work in. Like everything is so freaking crammed on the backside of this engine bay because the windshield is so damn long. And second thing I wanna say is holy shit. That looks so sick. Obviously it is not in like final placement or anything like that. I only have two bolts holding it to the manifold and the manifold bolts are just all hand tight. But holy shit boys, the Civic is gonna have a turbo. This is so sick. Now before we go any further with this, I do wanna mention that I looked on YouTube for install videos for anything you can possibly find on boosting 8th gen Civics. Just to kind of see where people route their coolant lines, their oil lines, where they actually get the coolant from to feed the turbo and where the oil comes from because the these cars aren't boosted from factory. And I wanted to see how people with Sidewinder kits route the wastegate pipes and everything like that. And nobody on YouTube has a good video or a video at all. There is not a single video on the CX Racing Turbo Kit. All there is is a video of a guy having it already installed in his car. And then he's just talking about how it's held up good over the last year. So if you guys are watching this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now because I am trying to show you guys as step-by-step -step as I can how to install this CX Racing Turbo Kit and how to boost an 8th gen Civic in general. Now this is my first time doing this, but boosting a car is boosting a car. It's all the same concept no matter what car you're boosting. So on this car, what I wanna show you guys first is coolant lines because the video that I saw on YouTube of a guy that had the CX Racing Turbo Kit, he bought the dual ball bearing turbo and he only had oil going to it. He just blocked off the coolant ports, which is not good on a turbo that has fittings for coolant lines. Because on a turbo that has fittings for coolant lines, 
lines, usually there's a restrictor in the oil feed. So there's not as much oil feeding the turbo, like a Garrett turbo, which is basically what this is. It's just an eBay version. On precision turbos, they do not have a restrictor in the oil feed, which is on the top of the turbo, which on this turbo is right there. There's a little block off in it because since precision turbos don't have coolant to cool them, they need a lot of oil flow to them to keep them cooled down. Whereas on Garrett turbos and this Garrett knockoff eBay turbo, they flow less oil to them and they have coolant to help cool down the bearings inside of the turbo. So if you're running a Garrett turbo with no coolant lines in it, that turbo is gonna get real, real hot and it's not gonna last as long as you probably want it to because you probably spent some good money on that turbo. So you wanna install everything properly and make sure you're not wasting your money, essentially. The first things that I'm noticing about this kit after mocking up the turbo is for one, everything here is gonna need to get Cerakoted or definitely heat wrapped at the least. And all of these lines, like the purge valve line, your brake booster line, the fuel line, everything like that is gonna need to get extended. And they don't include any of that stuff in the kit. So whoever tells you that they bought a turbo kit all together and just slapped it into the car and drove it, is a liar because that is physically impossible. These kits come with a lot of stuff, which is really nice, and you can get most of it installed, but you are gonna need to modify stuff yourself. And I'm gonna try and show you guys that, the best that I can, at least. If you guys watched the Subaru build, you would have seen my ETS rotated turbo kit install video. That video was like 45 minutes long or something like that. It was a freaking movie. So hopefully this video is not 45 minutes long, and I'm probably gonna break it up into a couple of videos. So that's why you guys need to subscribe so that you don't miss any. But outside of extending the fuel line and the brake booster line and everything like that, it's really not all that hard. So when you guys go to install this, don't get super stressed out about, oh no, this line right here for the brake booster doesn't reach all the way to the intake manifold right here. And the reason it doesn't reach is because from factory, they have this whole hard line set up with the bracket they use to mount the purge valve. And it runs across right there, but obviously now your turbo kit's in the way, so you're not gonna be able to use that. That is completely fine. Don't stress out about it. Literally all you need to do is have a vacuum source going to that brake booster. So you don't actually need this whole piece with this hard line. All you need to do is get rid of this hose. We're gonna pop a new hose on there. It looks like this is maybe three, no, I actually don't know what size of hose this is. I'd have to measure it. But all you need to do is run a hose from here to the brake booster, which for me, I'm probably gonna route this hose down underneath the turbo up along the side here and up into there. Because if I route it over there, you're just gonna melt it and then you're gonna have a huge vacuum leak. So that's not a good idea. Same thing with the purge line. You just need a line going into the purge valve, a line coming out, and then to the intake manifold. Or in this case, it goes to the throttle body, which is bolted to the intake manifold. So there's probably a passage there through the throttle body that allows that purge line to go into the intake manifold because that's how purge valves work. A lot of this is gonna be word vomit to you guys, but if you're really, really interested in knowing how these cars work and what it takes to actually boost these cars, you're gonna wanna keep listening. The next thing I wanna mention about the whole coolant situation with the turbo is there's a couple different ways you can do this. On pretty much all cars, they run coolant lines to the throttle body. Now, yes, you do need coolant lines going to your throttle body if you're driving in freezing temperature weather, but if you're in weather that stays relatively warm all year round, you don't really need those coolant lines going to your throttle body. They're not actually doing anything for your throttle body other than keeping it warm so it doesn't freeze up in cold temperatures. So if you want to drive your boosted Civic in the winter for some reason, which I actually might, but the way I'm gonna build this for now is just strictly for summer. You need to have those coolant lines go into the throttle body. So I'm gonna tell you the two ways you can do this with routing coolant to your turbo. I kind of have a mess of wires everywhere right now and hoses, but on these eighth gen Civics, they have two coolant lines going to the throttle body. One's a feed and one is a return. Just like any other thing in the coolant system, you always need a feed and a return so the whole system's a loop. Now the nice thing about this is there's one throttle body line right here. It gets coolant from this upper coolant neck and it goes into this hard line right here, comes down to another hose right down there. And as you guys can see, it goes right into the throttle body right down there. Then the other coolant hose actually just goes straight into this hard water neck right there. And that hard water neck goes back to your heater core through the firewall, which is those soft lines down back there underneath the turbo. So if you're building this car as a summer car, all you need to do to feed coolant to this turbo is you need to block off the two ports on the throttle body. You're gonna get rid of this whole mess right here. This hose is gonna be gone and the lower hose is gonna be gone. You're gonna run one of those throttle body lines to one fitting on the turbo, which is right here. And you're gonna run the other throttle body line to the other side of the turbo. That way you're adding another loop in the system. And now you have coolant feeding your turbo. 
easy as that. You just don't have coolant going your throttle body, which isn't a big deal if you're not in freezing temperatures. And I'll actually show you guys, the CX Racing Kit does come with two banjo fittings for coolant on the turbo. And I'm not sure which one is gonna be going on which side, but they actually do look like they're relatively close in size to the factory throttle body lines. So maybe that's where CX Racing actually wants you to get coolant from on this turbo kit, but they don't have any install instructions. So this is me just showing you guys how to do this from my past experience with turbo and cars. So with these coolant fittings, like I said, I'm not sure which one goes on the top and which one goes on the bottom, but basically all it is going to do is bolt up to the side of the turbo, just like that right there. You have a banjo fitting that threads in with a hole in it so that the coolant can feed through this banjo fitting into the turbo. And then that coolant line is obviously not right because it's going right into the side of the block. It's just gonna run, like I said, to one of the feed lines or return lines from where it feeds the throttle body, like right there. So we're gonna use these in a bit once we get our whole turbo location completely mocked up. And just to show you guys these banjo fittings, if you are new to working on cars or if this is your first build, this is a banjo fitting. You're gonna have a crush washer on this side and a crush washer on the other side of this fitting right here. You can see the holes in it like I was talking about before. It basically just goes right through here. Now the coolant is going into that little bubble there. It'll flow through the line and your crush washers that'll be on either side of this fitting will crush and seal as you tighten this whole nut down to the turbo. And that's how you get coolant to your turbo. Next thing I wanna explain is the oiling system and how you're gonna feed oil to your turbo. And this is gonna make sense as to what I was explaining before with Precisions versus Garrett turbos. You're gonna have an oil drain fitting and you're gonna have an oil feed fitting. The oil drain fitting is gonna bolt to the bottom of your turbo and there's gonna be a gasket that sits right here. And those oil drain gaskets usually come with your turbo when you buy them, which as you can see right here, we got an oil drain gasket right there. And a quick word of advice on these oil drains, especially on an eBay turbo kit, I would just take some silicone and put it on both sides of the gasket, just some black RTV. Before you tighten the two bolts up on this, and don't use too much silicone because you'll block off the oil passage, but use definitely a little bit because these are eBay parts, they are cheap, and silicone is a guarantee seal, a $5 seal from eBay. I don't know, I'll let you guys decide on that one. I would take the silicone over the $5 gasket because it's not worth the risk to have stupid oil leaks that are always annoying to fix because they make a mess. So use a gasket and silicone. Now let's talk about the oil feed, which is kind of hard to show. I'm holding like two fittings in one hand. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. If you look inside of that fitting, you can see how big the hole is on this feed side. But if you look inside of there, you can see how tiny of a hole it is through there. And on this side, you can really see how tiny it is. That is the restriction in this oil feed so that you're not feeding a ton of oil into this turbo because it is liquid cooled as well. It's not only oil cooled like a precision turbo. So if you're running just that much oil, oh, there's a really good angle. You can see how tiny the hole is. If you're only running that much oil into your turbo, you gotta remember that, yeah, your engine might rev to 9,000 RPM, but if your engine's revving at 9,000 RPM and that turbo's making 20 pounds of boost, that turbo is revving at 19,000 RPM. That turbine wheel is spinning way faster than the crankshaft in your engine. So it needs to be lubricated and cooled 100% properly, which is why I just took the time to actually explain that all to you guys so that you don't mess that up like the guy in the previous YouTube video that I just said I watched. Because another thing I wanna mention is on his channel, that video of him saying the CX Racing Kit was doing good after a year was like, a year ago and then about two months later he posted a video saying he blew the turbo on his CX Racing kit and he was kind of bashing CX Racing saying it's cheap but it's like dude if, if you're not going to put coolant lines to a Garrett style turbo and you're running that much oil into it with that restrictor and you're surprised that it blew up I don't know I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So now that we got this all mocked up, I can see how it fits. Another thing I did was bolt the downpipe up. Now there's no gaskets on any of this stuff. I just have it bolted up so I can see how it's all gonna kind of run. And I don't like the fitment of that downpipe at all. CX Racing sent out this little adapter flange for some reason for the turbo, which is not supposed to come in the kit. I think they threw that in there by accident, if I'm not mistaken, because this is a T4 outlet flange, which could bolt to the back of the turbo, to V-band adapter. And this is a very, very cheap V-band because it doesn't have the inside diameter seal. It's just a V-band clamp. So this would bolt onto there. And if you had a V-band downpipe, your downpipe would bolt up to this with a V-band clamp. But their kit comes with a four bolt downpipe. 
So I'm not sure why I got this, to be honest with you. There is absolutely no way I'm gonna be able to show you guys this, but that downpipe basically bolts up sideways and goes all the way over. So you can bolt the second half of the downpipe, which is right here, up to it with the V-band, and then it goes back to the rest of the exhaust. This downpipe with it like even off the flange, you can see that the flange is not 100% seated there. It's still tilted off. You can see that gap on that back bolt. It is touching that sidewinder manifold right now, which should not be happening. That is gonna click and clack and clank and all the noises because metal on metal contact does not sound good in engine base. So I'm gonna have to figure something out to make that work. Maybe once I actually get the turbo 100% mounted up and it doesn't move like this, maybe it won't be touching. I'm not 100% sure. That'll be for us to figure out once we get everything mocked up. And that manifold is not 100% bolted down. It's just kind of hand tight. So it could be sagging back a little bit too. Maybe they only give you like that much clearance and me not having it tight is enough for them to touch. I'm not sure. Another thing that I saw on the CX Racing website, which I will pop a photo up in the corner right here. When they installed it, they have one of the K-tuned straight upper rad hose necks installed on theirs. I think we can make this work with the factory upper rad neck thing. I don't even know what to call it. But you guys can see this whole upper rad hose right here is very, very close to the turbo. And it's not actually that close. There's like a two finger gap there. But what I mean by close is if you're not running an open turbo, it is very tough to get a silicone coupler on there with a rad hose that's that close. The straight filler neck basically just converts this rad hose from coming out at an angle. It comes straight out this way. So it gives you a lot more clearance with that turbo. So I think what I'm going to do just because this stuff is pretty easy to pull in and out of the car. It sucks working on the sidewinder manifold because it's a nightmare to get at. But I think what I want to do is get everything installed the way that it is. No Cerakote, no heat wrap, no nothing. Like I said before, we're going to run the car. We might take it on its first drive just on a base map. And then I'm going to tear it all apart again. And then we're going to Cerakote stuff just to make sure that everything works and everything fits the way I want it to. And then maybe when we pull it apart the second time, we're going to powder coat everything, make it look nice, pull the valve cover off, intake manifold, powder coat it all. And another thing I want to mention, there's so much about this kit that I need to talk about. The wastegate is only an eight PSI spring. I saw on the CX Racing website. So the most boost we can run on this car without boost creep is gonna be around eight to 10 PSI. This budget build idea is making my heart hurt a little bit, but we're going with it. I said I'd do it, so we're gonna do it. So the next step that we are gonna take here is I just wanna get this whole wiring harness set all the way to that side. Because we have it disconnected from the main harness that goes to the ECU, I just wanna have all the space that I possibly can here. So all I gotta do to get this off, I already pulled all the clips off and everything for the harness that goes to the transmission. Now I just need to pop that little clip off down there disconnect the connector under the intake manifold. We got to disconnect our electronic throttle body and all of our fuel injector wires and our map sensor. Disconnect all this and then we can lay the whole harness to the side. So we have a little bit more visibility here. And then what I want to do after that is get the front mount intercooler mocked up with the brackets so I can see how it fits so that we can see how the intercooler piping goes and how we need to clock this turbo and everything like that. Which for this intercooler, there's four mounts for it. There's two mounts on the top and two mounts on the bottom. And to mount it, we are gonna be using these two aluminum brackets right here. And they even supply you hardware in the kit, just some M8 bolts with some nuts. So let's get this knocked out and get one step closer to having a freaking turbo Honda, boys. This is gonna be so sick. Well, that's not what it shows in the pictures. I'm gonna pop a picture up on the screen here of what this kit looks like on CX Racing website for their demo photos. And uh, these brackets on the Civic that they have come out to the front and these bolt to the front of the bracket. So it looks like we're gonna need to do some trimming here and figure something out. I'll show you guys a close up actually real quick so you know what I'm talking about. But before we do that, we got the whole harness laid over to the other side of the engine bay. Now you can see how much room we have for activities over here. I also took the coolant lines off that go to the throttle body or just one of them when that goes to the top here because I wanted to get that gross hard line out and it's also the hard line for the valve cover vent that goes to the intake. And my purge valve line is all off too, that whole gross bracket assembly. And as I was explaining before, you guys could see, I just plugged this off. Realistically, all you would need to do is run this line straight to this line, 
and it would work still. I still can't get over how freaking good that turbo looks in this engine bay. So for this intercooler bracket, since we don't have any threads on the front of that bracket piece, what we're gonna do is somehow figure out a way to mount these to that block on the AC condenser without using self tappers because I'm not a big fan of self tappers, but we got one issue here. There's a little tiny lip on that bracket, which if you guys could see, it's right there. And that lip is not gonna let us mount this bracket perfectly flat. So I'm gonna take a little angle grinder and just grind this completely flat And then what I think I'm gonna do is drill a hole in this block closer to the inside So that we don't hit the threads of the bolt that's mounting the AC condenser And then I'm just gonna put a rib nut in there with like an M6 bolt Or whatever size bolt they give you for the intercooler bracket mounting Which look like M8 bolts Actually wait, they only give you four of these There's one, two, three, four Four. And that's just to mount the intercooler to the bracket. So they don't give you anything to mount the brackets to the car. So you gotta figure out your own way to get these brackets to stay. But they do supply the brackets, so that's good at least. See what I'm saying? This is the kind of stuff when you buy eBay kits. It's never plug and play stuff. You always gotta modify it, which is okay because it was cheap. If this was like an ETS kit or something, I would be complaining. The next bracket is this bottom bracket. If you guys look on the frame right here, there's two little flat spots in the frame. And if you look at the spacing on their bracket, it lines up perfectly with those two flat spots. So on the bottom, I'm just gonna drill a hole right through there once we get the intercooler mocked up on the top here and we're just going to install like an m6 or m8 bolt right through the frame with a nut on the back side tighten the nut up and we'll secure this bracket that way and then like i said we're gonna have to figure something out with a rib nut situation to mount it to the ac condenser and then we can get the intercooler on it's just a little bit extra work it's not that bad wait a minute safety first And you guys can see right inside of there, the threads for the bolt to mount the bracket for the AC condenser. We cleared it. So as long as you drill somewhat close to this side, you should be okay. And we're gonna do the same thing on that side. This is gonna come out super clean, I'm excited. Right, this is the biggest pain in the ass bolt-on intercooler I've ever mounted. I did grind those tabs completely flat on the AC condenser, like I said, and I really, really do want to keep AC in this car, so I don't want to disconnect any of the lines or anything like that. And judging by the way that CX Racing installed it in their pictures, there is no possible way to have this intercooler on there without taking off the crash bar and either notching the crash bar or just leaving it off completely. On the SCI, I don't have a crash bar obviously it's sketchy to not run a crash bar because if you get in an accident it's just gonna smash your intercooler and the whole rad support of the car even though if you get in an accident it's gonna destroy everything anyways but if you just rear end someone lightly that crash bar is really really gonna protect everything so I want to run it I think I'm just gonna have to notch it a little bit because if you look at this coupler on the right side of the car this one AC line is insanely close and right now it's like touching the coupler and as you you can see on the intercooler mounts it is kind of like an oval hole so you can adjust the intercooler fitment a little bit I have it pulled all the way to the front right now on the top and it's pulled all the way to the front on this bottom bracket too and she's tight the other thing that I did I didn't end up using those rib nuts I kind of realized after I started drilling I'm like oh wait this is aluminum not plastic so I just drilled a hole and then I took an m8 by 125 tap and then I just tapped m8 by 125 threads into the aluminum of the AC condenser, threaded an M8 by 125 bolt in there, and it mounted perfect. But another thing I should mention, every single piece of mounting hardware that I'm using is stuff that I have kicking around in the garage because the bolts that CX Racing gives you are like a solid half an inch too long to even mount in any of the holes. They bought them out even in these intercooler mounts that these are supposed to be going into. Like you can see right there, they are way too freaking long. So I just use my own hardware, which isn't a big deal. So for you guys, 
guys, if you're doing this, before you even start, go to the store and buy some really, really short M8 by 125 bolts. I use this bolt right here and it's even still a little bit too long. I'm probably gonna have to shave them down a bit. But as you can see, this is the bolt that I have kicking around and this is the CX Racing hardware right here, which is way too long. Now, if you guys look underneath here, I also had to get even shorter hardware for these mounts because they're even shallower than the top ones are. But I got those two mounted up to the intercooler first. Then I just marked with a paint pen on the frame where I wanted to drill my holes. Then I drilled my holes and I ran a bolt down in through the top so I can get a wrench up there and hold it. And then I can tighten this nut with a lock washer on the bottom. I have everything loose right now because we still need to mock up all the intercooler piping. And to mock up the intercooler piping, I want to be able to shift the intercooler around until I can kind of get perfect fitment with everything. And I already tried to put the intercooler pipe on the left side of the car in and I can already tell that I am going to have to notch or bend that piece of metal right there so that the intercooler pipe can clear. We'll just have to bend it in or out whichever way clears the intercooler pipe the best. Or I could cut it right out and then just spray some primer in there so it doesn't rust. But I'll pop it in there quick and show you guys that it definitely does not fit. So there we go. I got the intercooler pipe sitting in there right now. You can see I've already scratched the shit out of it. I can't even get it on this coupler on this side really. I got it in a little bit but not enough to get a hose clamp on it. And it's hitting the frame. So we're going to have to cut that out or bend it one of the two like I said. This is where your block valve is going to mount in your left front fender liner. So yeah, this intercooler has been a pretty big headache so far to mount up, but we got it mounted. I'm going to get everything run with the crash bar off the car so that it has perfect fitment. And then by the end of it, I'll put the crash bar on and see how much I have to notch out of the back of the crash bar. If you look on the CX Racing picture, which I'll pop up on the screen right now, you can see on the left side, they have some welds on the crash bar for some reason. I don't know if they cut it and bent it and then welded it back together or something. They also have two Sharpie marks drawn in a line right around where that intercooler coupler is. So I don't know what they did there to make it fit, but it definitely isn't just a bolt on piece. Then I'll pop up another picture of the intercooler pipe on the right side where you can definitely see that they notch the frame because you can see some primer paint there because they either cut it or bent it. You can't really tell in the photo, but they definitely painted over some exposed metal there. But this looks kind of sick. It looks like a turbo Civic, even though absolutely nothing is secure or bolted down properly. We got a big old turbo in there and we have an intercooler mounted on the car. Okay, it is exactly a week from when I filmed all of those last clips on the Civic. I haven't really had much time to work on this car or film because life gets busy sometimes. But before I end this 30 minute long video, if you guys made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I do need to explain one more thing or like two or three more things. Before everyone in the comments that has built boosted Civic says, oh my God, why is your coolant feed on the top and bottom and your oil feed on the sides? This turbo is not in its final placement. What you need to do if you are mounting a turbo is your oil feed, which is right here, needs to be on the top. It needs to be exactly 90 degrees from the oil feed to the oil drain. So then the oil drain gravity feeds all the way down to either your oil pan or in my situation, since I don't want to drill a hole in the oil pan and weld a bung to it, I'm going to pop a picture up on the screen right here of a company in the States that builds a little timing chain tensioner cover plate that has a 10 AM fitting for an oil return line to thread onto. That is what we are going to be running on this engine because like I said, I don't want to drill a hole in the oil pan. Then if you guys are curious of where to get your oil feed from, if you guys saw episode two of this build video where we were fixing everything, you saw that I replaced my oil pressure sensor. So what we are going to do is actually take that oil pressure sensor off, which now that I think of it, it was kind of a waste of money for me to buy a new oil pressure sensor, but we're going to thread the oil feed directly into that. We might put a T fitting in there and then thread the oil pressure sensor into that, or we'll just thread the oil feed for the turbo straight into the block. And then we'll get the oil feed right from the head into the oil feed on the turbo. We'll just have to buy the adapter fitting that threads into the block with the correct thread pitch for the oil feed line that CX Racing supplies you, which is this braided line right here. And then if we want to connect an oil temp sensor or an oil pressure sensor or anything like that, we could always use this sandwich plate here and put the sandwich plate in behind the oil filter. And then we have a couple adapter fittings that we can thread stuff into. And there's three of them to be exact. So we could run two sensors on here and the factory oil pressure switch. But we'll figure that out once we get there. I'm also gonna need to order a different oil drain because this one is just a barbed fitting for a hose. I wanna get a 10 AN fitting so I can actually run a dash 10 AN line for the oil return from the turbo all the way to the timing cover. So I can thread the 10 AN fitting to that tensioner cover that I just told you about. And the other thing I do need to mention is that this stock upper 
coolant housing is not gonna work. I said earlier in the video that I could try and make it work, but it's just physically not. It's too close to the turbo. The turbo inlet is not gonna fit with that coolant hose there. So we're gonna get the upper coolant housing that has the straight fitting for the rad hose. And then for running coolant to the turbo, like I explained before about the throttle body lines, I'm actually gonna do it different. I do wanna keep coolant running to the throttle body. So I think what I'm gonna do is just run a line directly out of the upper coolant reservoir, which on the aftermarket housing, it sits a little bit further back. We'll run that, feed that into the one coolant port on the turbo. And then the other coolant port will go directly to the throttle body. That way we loop the system and then the other coolant line off the throttle body will go right back to the factory location on that coolant pipe right there. That way we just added another loop to the system and that should work. So we got our oil feed figured out. We got our oil return and we got our coolant feed and return figured out for the turbo. Now we just have to wait on parts to come in. And this isn't confirmed yet, but this is the first time this has happened to me, which is pretty cool. We might have a company that is gonna be helping out with the build and sending us out some AN lines and the upper coolant housing, that chain tensioner cover, and a couple other goodies for the Civic. So with that being said, I'm kind of at a standstill. In the next video, we can cut that piece for the intercooler piping. We can get everything else done except for the stuff we're waiting on parts for. So I'm not like other YouTubers. I don't have thousands and thousands of subscribers. So I gotta pay for these parts. And it takes a while to get these parts in when you order them online. And it takes a while for me to make money to order the parts. So I'm sorry that these videos are so spaced out like two weeks at a time or a week at a time rather than two videos in one week, but I'm trying my best. So we're kind of at a standstill right now. I gotta wait till we can get some more parts in. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys watched the entire video, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long one, but to you OGs that stuck through it, thank you. So peace out boys. Hopefully you guys learned something in today's video because I know I definitely did. I'll catch you in the next one.